Yeah. Yeah, I don't like you. Definitely don't like you. I wanted to talk to you about your Like It's 101. I wanted to tell you that I think it's just bull. The only thing you need to help a girl with you know, is, you know, unzipping the back of her dress on me. That's all you got to do. That's right. I've never heard of this show, but I'm so glad I found it now because it just helps me with every other thing that I believe in already. I took some of your advice as far as dumping my female before the holiday, so I had to let her go. And I'm already letting you know I got more money in my pocket. All the women that other Tom Likas listeners have dumped, they yeah. are sitting in the bar, they're crying, yeah. they're all tarted up, hoping somebody will meet them so they can do something they'll regret for the rest of their lives. Yeah, and I think you started a revolution, Tom. But, uh, <laughs> it's going down. <laughs> I called you, and you let me know that I was a loser because I was paying for my girlfriend's college education while I was going to a lesser school. Well, I dumped that bitch the next day. How, how did she react to that? She was so confused, and I just told her, like it's 101, baby. <laughs> That's like Zorro making the sign of the Z before he leaves. That's great. This past Monday, she called me up saying she was pregnant. I basically told her that's impossible. There is no possible way that could happen. She got mad, hung up on me. About right after she hung up, about 10 minutes goes by, her dad calls me, telling me how dare I deny this and this and that, things like that, right? I basically tell him it's really hard for me to get your daughter pregnant when a year before I even met her, I got a vasectomy. You know what, pal? Man, you like the dopest cat on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> You, you get a hood pass from me, so anybody would come to the hood, I got your back. Huh? I love that. Because so you were married to somebody else, and you're impregnating a woman and having twins with somebody that, that is not your wife. No, it's not my wife. See, so your life is just a mess, essentially. Yeah, oh, yeah, sure, it's a mess. But you know what? I'm having two beautiful twins. Well, we don't know if they're beautiful. They haven't been born yet. I got the sonogram. They could be homely. Carly, uh, what did you want to say here to Eileen? I wanted to tell her that she's just jealous. She has no comprehension skills on listening. She can't understand anything that you're telling guys. I'm jealous of what, Carly? You're jealous of the fact that these guys are getting some, and for whatever reason, you can't figure out how to do the same. I said, hey, you know what? You just completely derailed me, you know, being a, a multimillionaire. The, all these, you know, dumb things that you would have wanted from me, I probably would have been a sucker, and I probably would have bought you all these stupid diamonds and pearls and rings and dresses and the dumb $600 bags that, you know, all girls want that actually serve absolutely no purpose. And you derailed that, and nothing but jaw on the floor, man, man. And really, like, right after that, I was just like, you know what? You know, you need to, you need to go. Take it easy. Then I went and I slept with all three of her best friends. <laughs> I don't know why he keeps calling me because he lives Because he wants else, to get you know? laid. <laughs> uh, he lives with someone else. So what? He wants to get laid. He's a guy. But I, yeah. I don't give it to him, so why does he keep insisting? Because he's going to keep doing it until you say yes. I tell this to people who call all the time. Stop trying to figure out why stupid people do stupid things. What is it like when all those rolls of fat are coming at you? Well, nine times out of ten, I'm on top. I'm getting her on top. Uh, useless. Rolling her in flour and looking for the wet spot? Ah, uh, pretty much. From the Playboy Mansion, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> nice rack. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Right at our telephone number, you're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. It's the Buddy Ball from the Playboy Mansion once again, everybody. Every December, shortly before you head off for the holidays, we are here at the Playboy Mansion. And we are here with many beautiful girls like the Likettes. We're here with the on stage. Give the Likettes a hand. The Likettes, everybody. Thank you so much, girls. Thanks for coming up. The Likettes are here. And, of course, we are here with you on this Friday with wide-open telephones. Everything everything is uh, 
fair game here. Anything goes, we don't care. Talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we've discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game, as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not absolutely fascinating, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. All you do is call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Martine on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. I want to tell you something. The only thing you pick with a bunch of scats. Uh, your phone is cutting out there, Martine, and I... I know you're calling up to ambush me I here, but... to me now. You can hear me. Well, now I hear you. Well, I had you on the speakerphone. I want to tell you... Well, didn't Dean tell, tell you not to phone. talk on the speakerphone? Didn't Dean tell you to put the uh, put the speakerphone down and talk on the phone? Well, I put it down. You're going to talk to me like a man now? No, I'll talk to you when I'm good and ready, because this is my show, you a-hole. I'll talk to you when I'm ready. You are here to serve at my behest. You will do what I say. I'm the boss here. You, okay, you're you are not going to call. You man. are not going to call here and order me around. Do you understand? Yes, sir. That's good. Now, when I'm ready to talk to you, and when I'm ready to listen to your stupid little ambush, you're going to pull on me. I'll give you the appropriate time to start saying the stupid nonsense you're about to say. Because I wasn't bored yesterday, and I know you're calling to ambush me. And uh, guess what? Uh, you're going to do it on my timetable. You're going to do it on my schedule. Do you understand? Okay, I understand what you're saying. That's good. Now, when you call here, Dean picks up the phone. He tells you get put down the earpiece, get off the speakerphone. He tells you that, doesn't he? But you didn't do that, did you? Well, sometime you're going to be on hold for 10 minutes. I, I don't care a- how long you're going to be on hold. Did he tell you to get off the speakerphone? No. Yes, he did. He did not. Yes, he did. He did not say anything about a speakerphone. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, don't call a radio show on a speakerphone, ever. Okay, I'm not on a speakerphone now. You it sounds lousy, me? and so do you. Well, you I don't, I can't help it. You're a racist. I'm what? You're a racist. You're making fun of my I'm, accent. I, I'm a, a ra- I'm not making, I've mentioned your accent. I haven't said a word about your accent. I you're said, saying I'm talking funny. I never said a word about you talking funny. I was talking about the sound of your telephone. Well, you, that's what you say now. That's what I said before, too. Get a better phone. I got a good phone. Well, it sounds like crap. When I was talking to you at the beginning of this call, I couldn't hear a word you were saying. I don't care what accent you had. I well, couldn't you hear you hear me it. now. Yes, now I can hear you, but I'm not yet ready to hear what you have to say. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you wait because you made me wait. When I picked up the phone, I couldn't hear a word you were saying. So now, in return, you're going to wait for my cue. And at that time, you will ambush me. Do you understand? Yes, sir. When I am ready to have you spit out all that bile you have within you, that is the time you will do it and not one minute before. Do you understand? Okay, I play the game like you want to play it. You want? No, no, no. I make the rules of the game because it's my show. If you don't like it, call somebody else's show. This That's is my- what I'm saying. I'm going to play I this game. make the rules here. If you don't like it, call somebody else. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. Good. Now I'm ready to hear your bile. Go ahead. You're not going to pick up any kind of good-looking girl with the $40 in your pocket. Let me tell you that. How do you know? I tried it. All you're going to pick up is somebody that got herpes. Oh, did you get herpes? Not yet. Well, how do you know you picked up somebody with herpes? Well, I'm telling you something. If you're going to go out to the bars and you're going to pick up a girl that's been with every other guy, you're going to get a herpes and a cold sore on your lips. Really? Well, how do you know so much about this? Because I'm a doctor. Oh, you're a doctor. I see. And uh, from which uh, university did you get your degree, doctor? This place is in Guatemala. You don't know the name of it. Oh, Guatemala. Do you have? Are you licensed to practice in the United States? Probably not. Yes, as a matter of fact, I am. You are. So you're a doctor here. Yes, sir. Yes. And what is your practice? What is your specialty? General practitioner. 
You're a general practitioner. And you could say without a shadow of a doubt that spending a lot of money on a date reduces the amount of girls with herpes. No. What I'm telling you is I'm telling you if you're with a one person for a long time, a long relationship, it's going to drop your chances of getting a sexually attracted. Well, guess disease. what? Guess what? The guys listening did not mean, need me to tell them to go out and bang a lot of chicks. They were already doing it. Well... They the were more all... people they sleep with, the more people they, that their partners have slept with, the better chance of them contracting a sexually transmitted disease. Well, again, it's not, it's not me that came up with the idea of banging a lot of chicks. Guys are already doing it. Well, you're the one that's saying they should not be in a you're the one. Relationship. You're the one implying that if I spend more on a date, I'm less likely to get herpes. That's what you're saying. I'm telling you, any self-respecting woman is not going to going to be with a man who only has a forty dollars in his pocket but that's my point uh, you know you know who likes lots of money spent on a date hookers how is their hiv and their uh, std uh, ratio well i don't i would not know because i don't deal with well doctor people. what would you say that might be what would i say what might be uh, the rate of HIV and STDs among hookers, would you say that that's lower or higher than the general populace? I'm not talking about the HIV. I'm asking you a question. I'm telling you, Doctor, with, the, with the prostitute, it's going to be much lower because they probably use a condom. Doctor, so, oh, so let me understand, doctor. You're telling me hookers are less likely to be HIV positive or have STDs? That's true. You've lost all your credibility. Thank you very much for the call. Yeah. Go pay a hooker $1,000. She's much less likely to be HIV positive than the average skank in a bar. Outrageous. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's the Bunny Ball from the Playboy Mansion. Let's say hello here to Jeremy on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm okay. I don't care. I didn't think so. <laughs> Hey, I wanted to tell you my theory about why women put on so much weight when they get pregnant. Your theory about why women put on so much weight when they get pregnant. That's exactly right. All right. What would it's that like, be? Okay. It's like early retirement for them. Oh, yeah. Because they know you're Their whole paying. job is to get you to impregnate them, and then they can just quit their job and take half of your money. That's exactly right. That's right. I've been listening. That's exactly right, Jeremy. So, I I just got my girl pregnant. <laughs> Why did you do that? Oh, uh, well, you know, there was a lot of reasons. I'm 30 years old. We're ready to start a family. We sit down and we listen to Tom Likas on the radio, laugh at all these stupid girls. She's a smart girl. Yeah, she was smart enough to get knocked up because she's going to be <laughs> taking your money for the next 20 years. Yeah, I know it. I know. Well, she makes more money than me, though, Tom. Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> we'll see how much she's making after she has the baby. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope it works out. Yeah, well, I'm hoping Santa Claus is coming to town. <laughs> yeah, me too. And you know what the odds of that are? Um, just once a year, right? If you're lucky. <laughs> Well, all right, Jeremy, it's been a little slice of heaven. Thank you so much for the call. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. As I have said on this program many times, if Helen Keller had a granddaughter who's a 9 or a 10, that's a perfect match. And by the way, honey, by the way, honey if you're out there, ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> It's the Tom Likas Show. It's... The Tom Likas Show from the Playboy Mansion at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. Kathy on wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Hello Tom. Hi, Great. how are you? Great. So, long-time listener, and I promise I'm not on the speakerphone. Have you ever called in before? Uh, one time about six months ago. I see. So, I'm not on the speakerphone, and I'm calling about that caller, the one with the accent. You know, I really like your show. I think you have a lot of good advice. I don't agree with everything you say, 
but let's be honest here. You know, when you said, when he said you can get a, tra a sexually transmitted disease by uh, sleeping with a lot of people, and you said, I don't give that, I don't tell guys to do that. They're already doing it. That's not true, Tom. You know, you do tell guys, why are you in a relationship? You should be out banging every chick you can. And so, you know, I've never heard you admit when you're wrong. No, darling, let me let me explain something to you. I don't. I didn't give guys the idea of going out and banging everything that moves. Uh, they're already doing it. And when, guy, are, when guys, are. when you're right, when guys are in a relationship, I say, why are you in a relationship? Yes, you should be banging everything that moves. Meaning you should be banging everything that moves like every other guy out there. But then you're giving that advice. The point is you're I'm advising advice. that you do what the other guys do. That's correct. And you can get a, and you're more likely to get a sexually transmitted disease. I thought, not if you use a condom. Well, what if you're going to... We're going to watch how graphic we're getting on the radio. Okay, sorry. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, can I and, say... And, and, our, and our average listener couldn't care less if you have an orgasm, okay? Pardon me? Our average listener couldn't care less if you have an orgasm, so a lot of them are not likely to be doing that anyway. Well, everyone I know does. <laughs> Really? Every guy I've ever been with has... Can I say oral sex? We've had oral sex. Every guy you've ever been with? Every single guy I've ever been with, because I like it. How many have you been with? Oh, over my lifetime? Maybe six, seven. Oh, all six. <laughs> they all did it. Every single one. Wow. So what is your point here? My point is... That that guy was right. That if you are having sex with multiple people and going to bars and picking up people, those are the girls that I mean I don't. But do that's that. not I'm true 42. because number one, as I proved to him, I, I, first of all, his original premise was if you spend forty bucks, you're more likely to get herpes. Do you right. do you believe that? Th say that again. He, oh, Jesus Christ, how complicated do we have to make this? He was saying if you only spend 40 bucks on a date, you're more likely to get herpes. Well, I don't know what that was about. It was weird. That's what he said. I don't know what he was talking the about. The chicks who are most likely to give you a disease cost the most. Yeah, it has nothing to do with money. Spending less probably increases your chances of not getting a disease. And, how, and explain that one. Because you're not likely to be with a hooker. Oh, okay. But still, I mean, he had a point. Again, I agree. I, I agree with ninety-nine percent of what you say. But I'm just saying, on that one point, he did. It was. It's true that you can get. You can, you're more likely to get a sexually transmitted disease when you're out. You're there. more likely to get hit by a car if you cross a lot of streets. But if you need to get somewhere, are you not going to go out of the house? Well, I've never been hit by a car. <laughs> that's not my question, dear. That's a uh, that that that's a cop out answer. Well, I think it's a we're a little bit more. I mean, I don't think that's a the more answer. streets you hit, the more likely it is you can be hit by a truck, right? Yes. But if you had to get somewhere, would you not cross the street? Of course, I, I no. Right, that's my I point. Okay, well... And I tell to... guys to be safe and always 100% of the time use a condom. Well, that's the other thing. You know, I just want to point out that any guy I've been with, it's not the girls that, not the girls that don't want to use the condoms. The guys really hate it. And they really try at every turn not to use one. They don't really want to use it. I, again, I can't hear you. We don't know that those are listeners to the Tom Likas show. Uh, do you think... Don't you think that's a true statement, though, that most guys don't want to use a condom? I think most women don't want to use a condom. That's true, too. Not, you know, not the best. But I do tell men, I can only do what I can do. I tell men, use a condom 100% of the time. And I rip them on the air when they say they didn't use a condom, when they say they knocked somebody up or whatever. There's no more I can do. Right, but you have to deal with reality rather than what... I do deal with reality. Guys are banging everything that moves, so I tell them to use a condom 100% of the time, which I think is a public service. Mm -hmm. Well, is, don't you think it might be good advice to say is to hook up with one person and then you're less no, likely to get it? No, but that, even then, there's no guarantee there because if the person you're with is a, is a cheating skank, 
you could be completely faithful and get an, uh, an STD or become HIV positive, as many people have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or, or, or vice versa. Right. You know, I have a friend that actually that happened to. She was in a committed relationship with a guy, and then all of a sudden she got herpes. Well, see, she, she should have banged every she should have banged every guy out there. Well, obviously he was doing something on the side because suddenly she got herpes. But that's my it, point. Even if you're monogamous, it doesn't guarantee anything. That is true. So I'm not going to recommend it. And while you think about that, dear, I'm going to move on to the next call. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to um, Michael on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yes. Hey, what's up? The ratings, last I looked. <laughs> so I wanted to give you a, a little critique of what I think of your show, because I think you invite your callers to do that. And basically, are you there? No, I left the room. <laughs> well, it's a nice room to leave. So, uh... I think that you focus too much on the inconsistencies or errors, little inconsistencies that people have, and then you harp on them. And it seems to waste a lot of time, although I do agree with you. So you are a, a, you're a programming consultant, are you? I mean, it's a radio show, and you should... Are you, should are, you a radio, are you a radio programming consultant? Maybe I should be. Well, but you're not. So you're saying you're not. Is that right? I'm sure you get lots of work, right? Are you recommending that after all the years of success I've had, that I take the advice of a 22-year-old caller with no background in the broadcasting business? I don't think you should change your show. Good. I just think that you have a good ability at stalling and repeating yourself. Whatever I'm doing must be working, right? Yeah, but there maybe that's because the callers are not so intelligent. Well, Michael, I, I think you should have a higher opinion of yourself than that. Well, I'm not every other caller. You are a caller. But I'm not. Everybody's different. I'm just saying in general, I'm generalizing like you So do. you're saying you're more intelligent than the average caller? Definitely. I'll be the judge of that. Okay. So what's my IQ? You haven't said anything of note yet. Oh, well, basically, that, that was just my point. It's just, it, I'm not... So now you're going to repeat yourself? No, I have another idea that I could share with you. You just said you were just about to repeat yourself, weren't you? I was about to rephrase. No, you no, you, you were about to, you were about, you were about to do what you were criticizing me for doing, weren't you? Yep, it's a, it's a there we go. So we already know you're not superior to me. Now let's see, let's see if you're superior to the rest of the callers. Well, you're pretty superior. I am. That's why I'm down here at the radio studio making a seven-figure salary, and you're calling from your car phone and paying for the minutes on your cell phone for the privilege of talking to me. I have respect for you and your show. Good. I deserve it. All right. I'm glad you're so egotistical and you have a show. Bye. Uh, it's only Bye. ego when you can't back it up with talent yeah. and results, as I have for so many years. Right, Albert Einstein? Oh, don't tell me you hung up, you coward. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Rigo on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yeah, hello, Tom. Rigo. I want to tell that other caller that uh, he better do what you do and get his facts straight. That's right. Uh, uh, I know you're right about women wanting to have babies. On uh, Monday, I was reading the LA Times. And they had a report about a, 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 a new, like, the baby boomers having babies at 40. Right. You know, 40-year-old women having babies. So you're obviously right about them wanting to have babies. That's what they want. You know, that's good. That's good that they try to have a career and, you know, go out and get educated. But, but they don't just want to have a baby. They want you to pay for it. That's, that's why they right. don't. Go, that's why they don't go in for artificial insemination, because when you that's get artificial insemination, you got nobody to pay for the baby. And they do that on their own, huh? They'd rather get you to pay for the baby. 
That's right, because if you buy, babies are expensive. Right. That is, uh, and 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 healthcare isn't getting any better, or cheaper. That's right. <laughs> you know. Yes. Hey, Tom, can you kick me out with the bong here? I can, Rigo. Here you go. It's Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Now, before you tell us what happened, Brian, remind everybody what we talked about the first time. So, well, the first time we talked, I told you I had a girlfriend, and uh, then I also told you that I got a pregnant chick that walked the hump. And uh, you told me that I, why, am I, why am I in a relationship? I'm 21. I shouldn't be in a relationship. <laughs> if I wanted to hump this pregnant chick, then I should dump that bitch. Right. And uh, that's the good advice. I dumped that bitch. But, uh, but uh, where I did take advice is when I pumped that bitch. So uh, I humped the pregnant bitch anyway, Tom. I see. And, and uh, uh, you lied to your girlfriend and told her you were where? Yeah, of course I lied to my girlfriend. Why do you need to have a girlfriend and then lie to her? I want to understand that. Well, uh, at this age, I mean, what's the point of telling the truth? What's the point of having a girlfriend? Just to hump when I want to. But you, could, if you had any game, you could hump chicks without them being your girlfriend. That's true. That's true. But so, so, ju- so, in, in other words, you're telling us you've got no game. No, no, I got mad game. Tom. Well, if you have mad game, you don't need a girlfriend. See, that's why I dumped that bitch, Tom. I dumped that bitch. No, you dumped that bitch because I told you to dump that bitch. Exactly, Tom. And I even told her, I was like, you know what? I'm too young to be in a relationship. I've been listening to Tom. Tom told me to dump that bitch, and you know what? You dumped. How did she react when you dumped her? She was flabbergasted. I'll bet. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, the water works and all. But you know what? I don't give a damn, Tom. I don't give a damn. Good for you. You know what? She had it coming. She had it coming. You know, she was one of those MySpace girls, always on the mic. We're on the oh, air. Sorry. I'm sorry. I, I forgot about that. That's weird. But, uh, yeah, I ain't done with that. I ain't done with that at all, Bob. I mean, uh, if she's out of my state, she knows that she's, uh, she, she's messing around. She's, she's going to clubs, doing her thing. I mean, she's a pretty girl, Tom. I mean, I, tr- I used to trust her, but, uh, ever since all this my state and going out and clubbing and all that, I just had to dump that bitch, Tom. Well, I'm proud of you for that, Brian. I think that's great. I thank you for the call. Tom, Tom, Tom. Kick it up a notch. Tom, Tom, Tom. Oh, yeah, here we go, buddy. Tom Likas. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Tom. 866. Do you care? Has anybody said I don't care? Well, you could uh, fake it like you do with Orgat. <laughs> I really care. Oh, my God, I care. You're convincing me. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show. the Playboy Mansion in Holby Hills, Los Angeles, California. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Bunny Ball. Every December, the Bunny Ball on the Tom Likas Show. Here we are. Bunch of contest winners. The Likettes are here with me. And we're here with your telephone calls at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. I'm here with the lovely Likettes, and everybody gets to see Likettes all painted as Mickey's Big Mouth Bottles. Look at this. Look at that. And that's all they're wearing is paint today, which is fantastic. Just love that. You like you like that outfit? Oh, yeah. It's a little cold in here, as you can tell. I can tell. A little chilly here in Los Angeles. Uh, the temperature indicators are out, and uh, you get a look at that if you were here, had you been the 97th caller or whatever the contest rules were. But uh, since you weren't, you're listening in on the radio, and that's just fine. Girls, thank you very much. Like cats, everybody. And here we are with your telephone calls at 1-800-5800-TOM. Hey, Tom. Yes? Just wanted to check in from out here in the tent. You know, uh, I don't think everybody realizes that um, you know, the weather here in Los Angeles is not exactly typical Los Angeles weather today. No. It poured rain last night. It's been very chilly. So what they did is they tented uh, the entire pool area out here behind uh, Hess House. 
Uh, and the, uh, the waterfall is still in action, so let me go ahead and do my usual... St- uh, let me stick my thing in the waterfall. Here. Yeah, stick it in there. That's the waterfall. Look at that. And uh, there's uh, lots of hotties rolling around here. I just saw Stacy Burke, who looks fantastic. Yeah. From StacyBurke.com. Yes. And uh, a bunch of bunnies that are giving personal tours around here. If you're uh, love that. If you're uh, into seeing Hef's monkeys and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Uh, last night, if you were watching, my name is Earl. You saw this guy who uh, has been in uh, the Longest Yard and Spider-Man Two and a bunch of other things. He's now like playing a prison mate of Earl's. It's the great Joey Diaz, right? Joey, here. what's happening, guys? <laughs> here at the Playmate Mansion, here, whatever the hell it is, <laughs> naked women, Mickey's painting girls green. I love it. <laughs> Joey, did we paint one of those girls in front of you one we time? Paint, I painted them with yeah, you. Are you kidding me? I got all the nooks and crannies too. <laughs> I got an A in painting that day. You, you know what I'm saying? You didn't leave a single inch nothing, undone. Nothing, nothing. I picked up legs, nooks and crannies, the whole thing. <laughs> The muffler, everything. You understand me? <laughs> you painted the muffler. I don't know. You gotta paint the muffler. Yeah. People neglect the muffler. It's tough. It's, you wanna get the party started, you gotta start with the muffler. <laughs> Everybody goes for the monkey, you gotta go for the muffler. You know that. <laughs> so, you're on television. Look at you. Yeah, getting busy again, you know. What is that all about? Couple Tell of us my what. name is Earls. I'm in jail. I'm always in jail. You know, man. <laughs> I'm always in jail. You Nothing get, changes. You got typecast here, Joe. Who cares? Put me in jail. I've been in jail all my life. I'm a Cuban prisoner. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a, what, what was Tony Montana? A political prisoner. That's what I am. <laughs> but look at me now. I'm in, this, I'm, I'm in this prison here with all these hot chicks. You can't touch them. I just want to bite one in the foot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you just want to bite one in the thigh. That's all you want to do one time. But I can't. I'm here representing you. I know. We're here, baby. We've got to behave ourselves. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And did I see you on uh, Frank Caliendo's show, Yes, too? I did. Frank TV last week. Absolutely. Yeah. We're rocking and rolling. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got insurance again. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Most people care about booking shows. I just want insurance. <laughs> as long as I can go for acupuncture, I can keep the addictions down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Couple needles in my eyeballs and my neck. I'm ready to rock. <laughs> if you really want to see good stuff, you got to go to Joey's MySpace page. That's right. That's, that's where all the stuff that's uh, not made for TV happens. But listen, forget about that. This yeah. is where the good stuff right. is right now. You got to get a DUI and fall on a monkey. That's how it happens. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Stumble on into a girl, have to throws you out. That's how to do it. But what's this man by the dumpster thing you're doing? Now? Man by the dumpster is my political. You know, I'm an ex felon, so I can't vote. So I gotta get my stuff out one way or another. You understand me? So man by the dumps is just a guy who goes on there and talks about Lindsay Lohan's coke addiction. Keep snorting, Lindsay. You know what I'm saying? You're 23. You gotta at least have an addiction till you're 29 if you want a Hollywood tr- true story, right or wrong. Of course. I'm surprised Lindsay's not here in the front <laughs> row with rocks falling out of her nose. That's my girl. You snort till you're about 28, then you go to rehab. Then you get married and you become <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer. You know the deal. But you got to rock and roll. You got to get down. You want to get those producers. Keep giving you movie roles. <laughs> oh, like boy. This. And don't you have an opinion about um, uh, this Spice Girl and her husband there? But, no, oh, I love that guy. Yeah, you know, you, I love him. Yeah, great. You're a big soccer fan, right? Yeah, great. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I grew up on soccer. That's what I did. <laughs> look at me. Do I look like I play soccer? I go to the track. I, I bet some horses. And I go home and eat Chinese food. That's what I'm going to run around and chase a ball. Just because I'm Cuban, I'm a swimmer, baby. By the way, speaking of balls, uh, that picture of your balls on our website it's got a, a lot of on. hits. You know, that's a, that's a secret that a lot of people don't know about. I cannot get that picture off the website. It physically won't come off. No, it won't. You're your, done. Your, your balls are still on Let there. Let me tell you something. My, my balls are sag, and their dues are paid. You understand me? <laughs> my balls got level one insurance. I got level two insurance. That's how bad things are. In my house, you understand me? <laughs> my balls got to book another show. So if you got an episode of A and E intervention or something, let's put my balls on somebody's forehead. They'll definitely stop snorting coke. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Science. <laughs> Joey will actually show his balls on stage, and it's not a good thing. Though. You got to do it. And yeah. now I'm 44. They become. I used to have two balls that become one. My balls are like a speed bag. You know what I'm saying? I got to find the girl who's an ex-boxer. <laughs> I got to get Clint Wood's number. Anybody, anybody. Rock, anyway. Hey, Rocky 7. Rocky 6, 6, 7. No, just 7, six, six, yeah, 7. Rocky 7. Rambo. Rambo's coming out January 26th. It's, it's perfect. time to get your machine guns back Rambo out. Rambo you know versus your balls. I don't care. I'll fight them all. My balls are solid. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm ready to go. But I'm, I'm happy you guys got me out of here. 
because I was I did it the last time too, and I'm headed to Vegas with Mickey's for UFC tomorrow night. I'm there. Really? Hell yeah! You know how we do it. Is Rogan in on that? Rogan's there. Yeah. Ralphie Mays there waiting on me. We're gonna go down and see Slayton over at Hooters and get a couple chicken wings on the arm. Yeah, we. Uh, Tom and I still need to do that. Oh yes. please! Yeah. He's over there crying poverty. I told him I'm coming down. I want everything on the arm, and I want wings and that. And those stale clams they give you over there at Hooters. Seriously, Joey, what would happen to you if, if they gave you your own room, I mean, you know, to perform in at Hooters every night, and they gave you a place to stay upstairs, you had all the girls, they're paying you all, uh, all Listen, that Listen, one by one, every chick would disappear, one by one. <laughs> CSI would have to move into the Hooters Hotel. <laughs> and my girl's here from Playboy Radio over there, give her a shot. Yeah. Oh, hi. Sexiest little animal in the world. Very nice. That's my girl, shots off of thing, the whole thing. Radio Playmate, that's my girl over I there. I didn't know you were doing Playboy Radio stuff. I got, I got to do it, you know what I'm saying? That's my girl, look at her. When you look like that, you know what I'm saying? You got to do radio with them. She's beautiful. <laughs> but I'm here with you. I'm happy you guys brought me out here. You guys are the best. But Mickey's the best. They sponsor yeah. all the great activities. Tom Likas, UFC. Right. You know what I'm saying? Who's better than me? You have six beers and you get into a fist fight. That's Mickey's. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he's Irish. At least you get stitches. And you know how it is. <laughs> Who's fighting this weekend, Joe? You got uh, Roger Huerta against uh, Guido, uh, Carl Guido from Chicago. Little Italian guy, this little Mexican. We're taking it back 2,000 years. You understand me? We're going back. We're going back to San Diego when that Mexican stumbled onto Gambino's nephew there on the beaches. <laughs> and it's like the it's like the end of the UFC fight night, like all the the Ultimate Fighter finals. Oh, right on. There's about six fights. It's going to be great. Ralphie Mays there. We're going to eat a couple cheeseburgers. And that's it. I'm here with you guys. I'm going to drink some Hornitos tequila. That's what you need. Tequila and Forney Anthem. And Mickey's. What do you, I hope you got a 10-minute delay. Because you know me. I'm rated X constantly. Of course, you, you spell Hornitos with a W, don't you? You're goddamn right. All right. There we go. <laughs> Science. Hornitos with a W. I like it. Tom Likas. This, this wine is really getting to him. I like it. Some people need weed. Likas has the red wine. He That's becomes, right. He becomes like Mao Zedong. He's awful. Whatever the word is, I don't know. Joey, what's going on with these uh, w with these weed places, man? Are they gonna, are they all going under? Or what? Listen, you know what? I'm Cuban. I'm used to getting persecuted. Day by day, they keep shutting one more down. But I'm holding on to dear life. You know what I'm saying? I got a whole plantation coming up right now. I'm ready to rock. Over in there. What's that island off the coast there? Over Cat Beach? Catalina? Right there. I got You're like, growing your own on Catalina. I got like 39 yeah. pounds and tons of weed coming in. <laughs> I got a couple of Iranians bringing in some number eight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Methadone is up 400%. And, and what's his name? He's trying to ice himself. What's your buddy's name on TV? Whatever. Which one? You know, the, the movie star. The heroin. You remember the pill? Who cares? Oh, I don't know. There's so many. I don't know who you're referring <laughs> to. Lohan, Britney Spears is pregnant. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Was that you or what? No, no, oh. I, I was unavailable that night. <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah, he did heroin, whatever. Britney Spears is pregnant. She's due. Who's the father? That's like a, that's Wait like a, a big Wait a minute. Tournament. She's pregnant again? I don't know. That's what I... No, I heard she was adopting. No, that's no, what, oh, I... she's, what is she adopting? Well, who's she going to adopt? Brad Pitt? Well, who's going to let her adopt? Who's I mean, she going to adopt? Oh, she has her own kids being taken away from her. How's she going to adopt more what kids? What is this with this adopting thing? And everybody wants to adopt overseas. What, we don't have no black kids here that need parents? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Angelia Jolie adopting that little, and she's got a little dad fan now. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> Science. Joey Diaz, you're going to be at the uh, Brea Improv Brea, next Wednesday. 7144, and with Tom Rhodes. All right, good. 0700. Very Slay, good. Josh Wolf, a little Christmas, American Gangster Christmas. Fantastic. And as usual, you always invited, baby. Fantastic. It's so good to see you. Always good Gary, to see you. you too. It's good to see you. Absolutely. Next, I love you guys. Next time, bring some of those edibles by, will you? Bro, I was going to bring them by, but the last time I ate one, I got diarrhea. I don't want to put it on you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Next thing you know, you'll be talking I'm Mexican. I can't have that stuff. Every time I see Joey, I get diarrhea. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you very much. Thank for you, Joey. Me. Joey Diaz. Brand Improv. Wednesday. Wednesday the 12th. Wednesday the 12th. Get a reservation for right God's sake. Right tickets are going fast. This is the last show, the last dirty show at prayer. There you go, baby. The Tom Likas Show.